Speaker Mike Johnson weighs in on the uh, Trump, the second attempt on his life. Welcome to Doug in Exile. And this is the Doug to Naples channel. I hope you have subscribed to us on YouTube. That really helps multiply our message out. Thank you guys for helping me out on that one. Let's get to Mike Johnson on Fox. At his golf course nearby, Speaker Johnson joins us now to react. Mr. Speaker, did you think maybe your meeting was going to be canceled when you heard about the shooting? My wife Kelly and I were on the way to Mar-a-Lago when the shooting occurred. And so we spent about three hours with him. Uh, he was in very good spirits, as you might expect. That's who he is. He's so resilient. And we were really grateful to see him. This is the biggest thing about Trump's character reveal. He was in very good spirits, not crumbling not terrified, not, they tried to kill me 15 times. And he's not afraid of these attempts. In fact, he joked about it on Twitter. He he had tweeted 2-0 that uh, they took two shots at him and didn't make it. There's no leader in the history of America that has been so attacked and has remained so strong and so resilient. He's one of a kind. Do you believe that about Trump? Let me know in the comments below. Is there something unique about Trump. I know this is weird because I don't want to go all woo-woo into supernature on you, but this is like, it starts to feel kind of divine, you know, and I'm very skeptical of my feelings and what, you know, all that woo stuff. But um, after a while, you start going, wow, this is his time in history. It is not his time to go. It's a remarkable thing. And Kelly and I spoke with him at great length about that because it is uh, something that no one can deny. God has spared his life twice now. And I, I told him that it reminded me of the bulletproof George Washington, our first president, who evaded being shot when he was an army colonel, the, the famous incident in the French and American Indian War. Now, this story I love. I, in fact, it's what I was thinking about. Right when Trump, that second attempt was on him. And that is George Washington, before he became president in the French Indi versus Indian Wars, the Indian Indians would take shots at George Washington back when he was a colonel or a commander in the army. They, they often called him like the ghost. He was like considered near supernatural because they would just be shooting at him on all sides and they could not take him out. Like, Kind of like Trump. Uh, where, where they all took shots at him and bullet holes went through his jacket and it didn't mm -hmm. take him down. That event took place, ironically, less than 50 miles from where President Trump was shot on the stage at Butler, Pennsylvania. It was so bad for George Washington, who would have bullets riddled through his jacket and they couldn't take him down, that he became almost a scary legend, like a, a, a ghost story you'd tell around the fire t among Native Americans, who'd call him this tall man that could not be shot. And maybe now that's how Democrats talk about Trump. These things aren't accidents. It's not luck. I, I believe it's providence. And we talked about that. It's a remarkable thing. It would move any man's heart. I think it's moved the president's. And uh, it's just something he's processing right now. Thank you for sparing my life another day. I'd love to hear those kinds of words come out of Trump's mouth. I think humbleness is a natural reaction to having your life spared. Those agents that were with him yesterday saw that that uh, barrel of that gun between the bushes on a golf course. I mean, you know, that's a difficult thing to spot. Right. Thankfully, they did. But unlike in Butler, they did not pause. They immediately pulled their weapons and fired. So I like some of these details. They saw a barrel and this time they just they they're the ones that popped four shots on him he dropped his gun and ran i think that's why this guy the the uh, the suspect uh, the shooter threw the gun in the in the the bushes and ran i, I don't want to make too much out of it that this is a democrat this is a democrat i only want to know that the media is trying to pin him as they always try and say oh he's a right wing gun nut and that's why we have to take all the guns those are the kinds of debates that our media has and i don't like it I'm just saying I blame the shooter and just the shooter, not the rhetoric. But if you're not going to blame the rhetoric of the Democrats and the media for this shooter, then you can't blame it for Trump inciting an insurrection on J6. I think there are some some really patriotic, uh, great people working in the Secret Service, but it's the leadership. We have no faith. I have no faith in Secretary Mayorkas, Department of Homeland Security. He's, He's a an joke. abject failure. It's very rare to hear a professional criticize another professional, but Mayorkas is so bad at the DHS, you know, to a point of being negligent. I, I would even go so far as to say evil. I, I don't get He's a bold-faced liar and always has been about the border, about protecting the president, about whether if he's going after American citizens or not, all of that. He has, I, I can tell a liar, he's a liar.
We impeached him in the House, as you know, but Chuck Schumer uh, made it die in the Senate. So, And all Democrats do. They end up standing by this kind of feckless leadership. And the only way that you can stop it is by voting him out. And that's what we're going to do. But everywhere we go, there's an energy on the ground. We are going to win the House and the Senate. And Donald Trump is going back to the White House. But we need everybody to stay involved. we got to make it too big to rig, as President Trump says. He and I talked about that at length yesterday as well. Uh, we're, we're very bullish. I, I'm convinced we're going to grow the House majority, the Senate. It will come back to our control and 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 president trump's getting another term and we'll fix this country i just wanted to end on that note of encouragement that mike johnson says we will get the house and the senate you get that and the and the presidency you get that and trump can start doing some stuff fixing our government taking these totalitarian anti-democracies out these uh, bureaucrats i hope we get trump enough of a majority to fix it I'm Doug in exile.